All right, create comma delineated flat file schema in BizTalk 2013. What are we doing? We are creating a schema, which is a definition for BizTalk to be able to parse a flat file and convert it to its na native language, which is XML. What are we using? We're gonna use Visual, Visual Studio 2012, BizTalk 2013, Windows Server 2012, this is very basic stuff. It's probably all going to be relevant for whatever version you happen to be using. I'm going to open up this test flat file that I've created here for the purposes of a demo. And we've got two people and addresses defined here. I'm going to call these, these are our vendors for the, the purposes of this demo. I'm using Notepad++ here. If you're not using Notepad++ or something like it, I highly suggest you do for this type of exercise. What you can do is come in here and show all symbols, which will allow me to see two non-printable characters here, control return and line feed. Um, these are what we're going to use to tell the flat file schema how to break these two separate records up. So I'm gonna come in here to Visual Studio. I'm gonna create a new project. You'll notice I've got the BizTalk projects installed here. If you don't see this show up, it means you don't have the dev tools installed. You need to go ahead and do that. I'm gonna call this flat file demo. Wait for it to create the file. Okay, I'm going to then just go ahead and create a schemas folder because I like everything nice and neat. I'm gonna add a new item. This is not a generated item, even though we're going to effectively be generating this this item through a, a wizard. New item. Click schema files down here. It's flat file schema wizard. There is also a flat file schema if you want to define one manually. I never do. Always use the schema. Okay, let's call this vendor file. Okay. It's telling me what we're about to do. It's fine. We're gonna Click next, it's asking us for an instance file. So hit browse, go back to the file I was showing you before this test flat file. First thing to think about is not the record name, the target namespace. Let's take a look at this. We've got my project name, schemas, vendor file, that looks good. Record name, it's asking for a root node name. I always call this the name of the vendor or the name of the entity that we're trying to define here in this case, uh, vendor singular, okay? code page this is um, this is never really going to change unless you've got some specific language uh, or encoding that you're using so I'm hit next now it's asking us it's taking a look at that flat file it says hey what data in here do you want to use to for the purposes of this this exercise of defining this flat file we we'll select the entire first row including you'll notice the two symbols at the back here these are representations of the non-printable end of line characters I had shown over here in this file. Okay, next. How, how am I splitting up these files? Well, again, um, end of line characters, it's a delimiter symbol. It's not a relative position. There's another demo that I do showing relative position flat file. I'm gonna hit next. Okay, now it's asking me what I'm gonna use to split. And already it's got control return and line feed selected. There are a number of other things you can select here, including just a line feed, which is, would be common if this file was coming from a, a Unix system. Okay, next. Now it's showing me the record. It's asking me what type of record this is. This is a repeating record. It's important, repeating record. And because it's repeating, I'm gonna call it something plural, notice? Okay, now I'm gonna click next. It's essentially going to take me through this wizard again and ask me to find the records within that, that repeating record. Okay, it's showing me the data from before that I selected. Notice this time it does not include the, the delimiter uh, symbols here, which is good. This is all we want right here. I'm going to hit next. Again, delimiter symbol. This is a comma delineated file. Next. And it does not have my comma already selected here. I'm going to Pick it from the list. Um, you can type anything you want in here, including asterisk. That would not be an uncommon delineated, delineated symbol. So here's a comma. And now it's going to ask me to, it's going to split the contents of the, that, that 
example data and it's gonna ask me what I want to call this okay let's call it name address city state zip and choice that's gonna ask me what type of element each one of these is we're just gonna keep it field element you might want to have an attribute maybe depending on your data and the data type we're gonna leave these all as a string although you have your choice of data types if you want to go ahead and define your types here okay next it's finished so there's my schema it's got all the, the data I'm interested in you can test this against the example file or any other file uh, and see if it works very easily it's built into Visual Studio if you right click you can say validate instance how you set this up make sure that you have your properties up I already do and there is a option here called input instance file name now it's already got my test flat file selected because I use the wizard if you don't have it selected you can easily click the ellipses and select your file there it is I'm going to right click and say validate instance and in my output down here you'll see it has the input instance I used I've got two records here and it has the resulting XML file based on that schema it's got our root node name vendor it's got our, our namespace we defined before and sure enough it's got two vendors one two with um, each one of the the vendor data that we had defined so that looks like it worked what do you use this flat file schema for well the next step would be to use it in a send or receive pipeline in particular using the flat file disassembler or assembler component I in another video I show you how to create these types of pipelines well I hope you've learned that learned something and and enjoyed it thanks bye don't forget to check out my website alethiadevelopment.com or twitter at alethiadev